What is good? Boom, fresh crack. Boom, another fresh crack. Boom, another fresh crack. Tripod's all here. Quad pod. We got JB at the Bauer Club. What's good, buddy? Got started early, I see. Had a little hiatus, but we're we're back. Yeah, thanks for having me back. Um, Trying to get back on more of a regular cadence with you guys and yeah, I hit the T a little early tonight, so I'm feeling good, guys. I'm feeling good. <laughs> feeling loose. I like it. Like it. He's gonna get. He's probably sweating a little bit under that sweatshirt. I am go. actually. I, I am. All right. So I like it a little sweaty. Um, <laughs> JB is the uh, is is part of the Dynasty Theory FF. That's where you can find them on Twitter. They got a great podcast and a great YouTube channel. So if you're not familiar with that, make sure you go check all that out super active on the patreons as well good patreon for sure um a lot of good stuff going on with uh mr jb at the bauer club uh on twitters um and forgive me for your colleague for your co-host names uh mitch Sorensen at dino mc on twitter and dan lamagna at ff coach dan i might know that if they would ever join us but they don't they just you know I gotta ask. I got. I gotta bring up. Um, who asked me? I, I never know who's, who's I, running. I'm usually your... on the on the Twitter DM. All right. I can. Nev- I never remember. Uh, no, I gotta bring it up to them because I would love to jump on. Uh, get all six of us do a mock or yeah, you know, so, just shoot something the shit, fun. Whatever. Communal would be would be fun. Mm-hmm. So, we'll, we'll as we get a little further down the road with rookies. I'm not sure where you guys are at, but maybe we'll do like a one round rookie mock, and then as we get a little further down the line, expand it to two round rookie mock. Um, and, and have some fun there. So, yeah. Um, but tonight we're going to do, uh, we're going to talk a little running backs. <laughs> hit, him, this, hit him early. <laughs> um, running back. We're going to talk some contract year running backs, but we're going to mostly talk about that kind of class of 2019, um, mm. which would be your Miles Sanders, your Josh Jacobs, your David Montgomery's, um, those guys who were, were kind of supposed to really help change of the guard and, we talking daryl henderson <laughs> we're, we're probably not going to get into oh end good tonight. oh good um he's he's available these guys were supposed to be sort of the changing of the guard and it didn't didn't quite happen although jacobs has been underrated and miles sanders has been injury prone a little bit montgomery has been a, a league winner but not necessarily maybe strong throughout the entire career here um so we kind of wanted to just talk about that they're in the contract year kind of how we're looking at them, what they did this year and throughout, and then, you know, how we're valuing them sort of moving forward. Um, That's any, a long YouTube title. Any questions um, before we get rolling here? Who are we starting with? Uh, let's go Josh Jacobs first, since he's he's the leader in the clubhouse um, as far as all these guys go, although Miles is, is, is trying to make a case here uh, late. Um, so Josh mm-hmm. Jacobs right now is 13 games. Um, he's played, he's PFF's number one rated running back at the score of 93.0. He's the RB2, 282.8 points, 21.8 points per game. Um, now he will be 25, I believe in February. So still young Mm. enough. And, you know, I know a lot was, has been made of the 27 year olds, not really getting to that threshold of RB one seasons, but it seems like this year we're having a little bit of a resurgence of some of the older running backs, maybe being able to show that you could hold value for an extra year or two and maybe be a little less scared. Um, so we'll see how that factors in. Um, but you know, 262, 268 attempts for Josh Jacobs, 1400 yards. That's good for number one. Um, his yards per attempt are 5.2. That's tied for sixth TDs, uh, 11 tied for third targets 50 tied for or that's good for eighth catches 44 good for seventh um elusive rating um is 100.7 that's a pff stat oh. um so you know just good? just really putting up a lot of good numbers second in yards after contact with uh 1004 uh fifth in yards per contact per attempt 3.73 uh 79 missed tackles force that's good for number one Uh, runs of 10 or more of 10 yards or more 36 that's good for 11th and design runs of 15 or more uh 14 that's tied for fourth so a lot of upper echelon straight facts um straight facts he's good 
a lot of upper echelon uh, numbers there for Josh Jacobs. Do we care? And how are we how are we feeling about Josh Jacobs right now? JB, I'll, I'll open it up to our guest. Yeah, I mean, all, all that stuff is fantastic. And, you know, from past uh, guest appearances by myself, I love a running back that's going to be involved in the passing game. And 44 receptions off of 50 targets had, what, 54 receptions last year. He has shown that he can be a guy that you can rely on and not just give you work between the tackles and running the ball, but also through the air. And the big thing for him coming into this season, we had the concern. I say we, the dynasty community, we had the concern on on whether or not you know, was he going to be extended since they didn't exercise the fifth year option? Well, you have uh, McDaniels coming in. How is that going to impact the way they use the running backs? And then it, you guys remember the Hall of Fame game, right? Yeah. Oh, dudes, play, dudes playing well into the second half, alert the media. Nobody wants anything to do with Josh Jacobs. So he comes out, he's putting up a fantastic year. And from a short term perspective, He's somebody that if you have on your roster, you're probably in good shape at the running back position. Hopefully you have a little bit more depth, but he has climbed for me. He was probably in that 20-ish range preseason. And when I say 20-ish, I mean uh, in, in my tiers looking at the dynasty running back landscape. But at this point now, you got to have him up there with even like Swift, Mixon, uh, Nick Chubb, Eckler, even Saquon Barkley. Like I, I know you guys wanted to – talk about Jacobs, Sanders, Montgomery, but looking at contract years, Barkley's in there too. And there's a very realistic chance that Jacobs ends up being a a more highly sought after free agent running back than even Saquon Barkley. You know, I I think he's been a little bit more durable and the, the, the upside is certainly there. My concern here, well, it's twofold. One, from a short-term perspective, and that's really what we're looking at with running backs, maybe a one, two-year window. Anything beyond that is is kind of silly with how quickly things change. But with Josh Jacobs, the end-of-season schedule is not doing him any favors. They have one of the most challenging playoff schedules in terms of def- defensive rush efficiency, and that's always a mouthful for me to say. But then, of course, all of these guys that we talk about tonight – there is going to be that discussion in the back of people's heads. Well, he's not under contract. What's going to happen? And I think the whole dynamic with the running back landscape right now is interesting because you have really solid running backs. And like Casey started uh, off the show with saying, well, these were running backs that were supposed to come in and possibly change the landscape. And, you know, they haven't really, uh, for one reason or another, really got up into that upper echelon. But Jacobs probably, he's the one that, that's right there. So where is he going to land? Who knows? Does he stay in Vegas? Possibly. But it's going to be an interesting dynamic with the 23 rookies coming in and all of these free agent running backs that uh, one of the best free agent running back classes we've seen in quite some time. It's going to be an interesting dynamic with these guys do they get contracts in free agency and as a result, not, you know, it, it knocks some teams out of the running for these running backs in the 23 rookie class, or do teams kind of play it slow and hold off? Well, you know, we have, you know, I, I know offhand cause I was talking about this earlier. The Broncos have two early third round picks. Do they bring in a free agent running back to help out with Javante Williams coming off of an injury or Hey, Let's get a running back on a rookie deal. And it kind of deflates this free agent class in terms of the the earning potential. So it's going to be really interesting like that, that March through end of April time period. It's going to be so exciting here in the dynasty landscape. Yeah, it'll, it'll, will certainly be interesting to see the, the bag as the kids say that Jacobs uh, will be obtaining, um, Come from oh, and really, case case really quick. I'm, I don't even think I answered a question there. That's okay. I was just so excited. I was just so excited to talk to you guys tonight. But to put a price on it, I I would move a a late 23 first. I'm contending. I would still move that for Josh Jacobs today. I don't think All that's right? getting it done, right? Well, he, so here here's my thing. I there's a very good chance it doesn't, but. If you see a team that maybe they're in the quarterfinals and there's no trade deadline and they go out in that first round, 
well, they, they have no future draft capital, kind of an aging team. They were thinking about kickstarting a rebuild, but they want to make one last push. Maybe there's potential, hey, fire sale, let's get younger going to the offseason because it didn't play out as I planned. Uh, but yeah, I, there's a very realistic chance I think you're not going to get that done. So I would go even up to, uh, you know, it's even if I don't get a buy in the playoffs, so I'm not one of those top two teams necessarily, I still would be interested in moving my 23 first. I think some pivot opportunities maybe, it, I would move mix in, See that Jacobs is so hot right now. He's yeah. so hot. Like he, he's so, so hot, hot right now. Ansel, Ansel. so hot right now. <laughs> nice. <laughs> like, uh, fucking love. You know, I, I think you, you'd have to craft something here, and it would really depend on your your potential trade partner of who has Josh Jacobs. Now, if I'm not contending, I would move Jacobs for you know, hopefully. You guys have extra first round picks, so it's not yours because you're contending. I can get into that 104 to 106 range, which is a little pricey, but you're looking to make a push. So you're like, hey, I have an extra first round pick. Let's see what we can do. So it's like sell for a mid first, buy for a late first, and then add some additional pieces uh, and, and pick up the margins there and, and try to get something done. So you're not giving up the mid first. I, I couldn't. I couldn't. <laughs> Based I mean, on just your, I, how much of this class that you, that you like? Yeah, because if, if – if, so here's my thing. It, Stroud and Young at the quarterback position, they're going to be – assuming super flex you're, when, when you're talking these values. Are we? I didn't, I didn't realize I was jumping on here with dinosaurs playing well, one I'm just, Well, he, cause he, I'm just <laughs> explaining it to the audience. But you no, guess. no, I'm messing around. Uh, yeah, super flex or two quarterback, and then let's say tight end premium because then we'll get Michael Mayer sure. in there towards the middle to end get of the first round. As much value as we can get going around here. That's what I want to see, you know? That's what I want, yeah. yeah. Let's do start trading, 10 linemen again. while we're at it. Uh, but so we have Stroud and Young up there, and then I'm hoping uh, Levis and, and uh, uh, Richardson get that first round draft capital because I'm out on them. So I Ooh. hope they get first round draft capital because in that case it's going to push some talent down to that 108, 109, 110 area. So if I made the playoffs, I can get a nice piece there that I'm looking at right now. My top eight is kind of it's similar to last year. My top eight, th there's a, a drop after that. But anyway, back to. Uh, what I was saying there was Stroud and Young. You have Bijan at 101. And then for me, that 104 to 106, I I'm taking my top two receivers there over Josh Jacobs in a one-for-one -one swap. And then we're talking about Jameer Gibbs and Sean Tucker right there. And you're giving me guys that I think are going to get solid enough draft capital. I love the collegiate profiles. And you're giving me that reset on three, four years and – uh, entering year one of a rookie deal. So, yeah, I, I would not be comfortable moving the up to 106 for him right now and him being Josh Jacobs. So we're getting the 107. So he is him, <laughs> is what you're saying. Um, I, I hate I, Is that like a worst. thing now? I hate worst. it. I haven't it's heard that. I'm, I'm glad I hadn't heard that. <laughs> hey, you, got a, you, so got a, you got a second kid right now. You're, you're just... <laughs> You know. It's so stupid. It's real terrible. He is um, him. You, know, you, you haven't seen the late the video lady. You are not him. She's pointing up, and then they just cut to something else. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, she's that. Yeah, yeah, she's <laughs> us. Um. All right. So you you mentioned some other running backs there. Um. I'm 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 if I'm if I'm in the middle of a playoff run here, I'm, I'm okay. I, I probably wouldn't go top top notch, but if if I, I'm fine with middle of the pack one six ish even super flex to, to get josh jacobs because i'm a that, that's if i think i've got another year of run in, in in me here to be at the upper echelon of things because i'm guaranteeing myself a guy who really has been good and just kind of been slept on a little bit i believe if he finishes in the top uh of, of where he's at right now he's obviously two it would take a lot to slip all the way out of being an rb he's one. rb two he's the he's the number eighth player overall I, I, I in ppr think, scoring i think he's been, i think this will event be very close to like his third rb1 season in the amount of seasons that he's been in the league which is four so far um i think that's pretty solid and regardless of where he goes he kind of can do a little bit of everything and and you know has been very productive throughout it would seem like maybe 
I, I don't exactly and know what's going to happen. And playing banged up. Right, right. Yeah. And you, right. So not you just mentioned, playing through injury and just and, and almost getting de- detracted for that because you're not performing. He's still fucking balling. Right. You, know? you you mentioned a little more durable than than Saquon. You know, just has really avoided the big time injuries. Um, and but stays a little nick, but always plays. I did, I did knock on wood over here with yeah. that comment right yeah, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so in in November, DLF ADP, which is usually a little behind, had him at RB sixteen. Um, and so some of the guys around him, non RB wise, well, even RB wise, uh, Najee Harris, uh, give me Jacobs, Jacobs over Harris. And they're not, they're really pretty much the same age. Um, they're really not all that different in age. Um, so I think I Najee's a month older or younger. I could, I could lean. The only thing is that you kind of know that if there could be an offensive line there, that the Steelers don't mind leaning on Najee to give them enough run and we're a little uncertain about Jacobs but I, I, I like everything we've seen of Jacobs um, how about Ramondre Jacobs yeah Jacobs over Ramondre why is that uh, I would be very surprised you know Damien Harris he's on a contract year I'd be very surprised if the Patriots don't bring somebody in to not necessarily compete but at least compliment Ramondre and Shit, it's Pierre a situation strong finishes strong here and maybe he just I, becomes the 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 other the rb killer you know both or, of them eating kevin each other Har- cannibals Ke- kevin harris yeah. looked kevin decent harris, yep. uh so uh, you know that's my concern and of course it, it's like one of those off-season narratives does it come to fruition we'll see but also uh, J- I mean jacobs and ramondre they're both 24 years old you know, and I think one thing to think about with all these running backs, yeah, it's a, it's scary in terms of, and I act like we're talking about something serious here. Oh my God, it's so scary. <laughs> it's so terrifying. You know, it's scary where these running backs are going to go, but we have like 10 good free agent running backs. They're not all going to just be dead after this year. Right, right. You know, so I think that's something to keep in mind. And when we hit the off season, we're no longer, uh, keeping track of wins and losses. I think with that level of uncertainty with a lot of these running backs, that's going to be the time that you can go out and get a major discount. You know, you, you, even if you were a contending major team, discount. Hey, I want I want to get out ahead of, of, of getting stuck with Josh Jacobs when he ends up in a, you know, crummy situation. Well, okay. Let me, let me alleviate those concerns. Let me take him off your hands. So uh, before I was doing this, uh, gathering the DLF information. December actually came out right when I went. So he is he's RB eleven um, for the December ADP for DLF. Um, would you go uh, Cooper Cup or uh, Josh Jacobs? Oh man, I'll go Josh Jacobs because there is a real level of concern for me with the retirement of Matthew Stafford. I think that is a very real possibility. You know the the multiple concussion protocol and back to back weeks. Uh, you have the spinal cord contusion, and I, I know this I is going to come across. As, what'd you say? Nothing. Just a Mike Tyson quote. <laughs> oh, um, and, and I know this is going to come across as like kind of jokey, but uh, kind of serious. Uh, Matthew Stafford has a very vocal and opinionated wife, who's also and, been through a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The the, the brain tumor. Yeah, the, the, you know. So he he won his Super Bowl. He's made his money. Ton of money. Go spend time with your family. I think that. And then who's to say McVay? He might be in the broadcasting. But you look at that team. This is a, a prime example of a <laughs> dynasty manager. That's a Rams that fan. Pushed all, he pushed all his chips in, and now he's saying, "I'm going to orphan this team." Yeah. Hey, good luck, guys. I'm cutting back on leagues this year. Good luck. I feel like you might get one more ride out of it, but that's not probably not enough for me to stick with. I didn't mean to upset anyone there. I'm no. sorry. You're upsetting sorry. me. <laughs> you guys were brothering the last time you were on the show. No. Shit. <laughs> Times change. Yeah. This is not apart. 2008 Rams. I'm not doing that anymore. I'm not doing that anymore. You got Baker anymore. Mayfield. There's nothing to be upset Fuck about. Fuck Baker. <laughs> I agree. It seems to also be the sentiment right now that that is kind of swirling. McVay was kind of leaving a, 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 a kind of a small window here when – Stafford Cup, Donald kind of leave. He might go to the booth for a little while. Oh, take I would for that kind of money. And then maybe eventually mm-hmm. come back um, but um, and get a little break. Maybe he was t- starting a family kind of deal. Um, so Like a, a Sean, Sean Payton situation. He's already talking about. Right. 
I think that was coming back. Trying I mean, to get out of that situation. Or, 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 or the Gruden route. Just yeah. don't call the commissioner a pussy. Right. <laughs> right. Um, all right. Let's go. Let's go one or two more guys. Um, the jump up here has me a little rattled because I had a little sorted a different way. Um, how about, let's see. You said Cooper Cup over him. Drake London. They'll get a young. No, guy. no. I, I would take Josh Jacobs over Cooper Cup. That's what, that's what I'm sorry. That's what I meant. Yeah. Okay. Josh Jacobs over um, Cooper Cup. Let's move up a little bit. Drake London, young guy, you know, good good market share. Uh, but oh, not necessarily, I know. you know, turning into <laughs> Oh, I know. <laughs> not necessarily <laughs> turning into fantasy production per se, but it's a low threshold over there right now. I League dynamic I think would dictate this a little bit. You know, if you're in your league and you're familiar with it and you're in a situation where, you know, the market is a little stingier on running backs and there's certainly leagues like that. I think I I think I lean Jacobs, but that's also if I'm a high level contender and I like my chances already, you know, looking out one or even two years. But there's a lot of scenarios I would take Drake London. Yeah, I, I would say. 60 40 split Eileen London I think that's fair I like I like the contextual uh because you know we're obviously playing this game to kind of figure out the value but there is a whole lot of nuance in in all of this and I think mm-hmm. that's a fair that's a, that's probably about where where I would be um on that and I think I agree with you with pretty much all of the rest of those uh let's, and r- now now yeah. Ritter steps in right for Atlanta know what's about to happen maybe we open it up a little bit probably not but maybe they want to see what they have um, I, mean, I, I think that's it. They didn't. Um, maybe they were trying to hold on tight and play it a little more conservative to try to maybe make the playoffs because the division's bad and now it's it's out and, and apparently Marcus Mariota's out. Um, I think the worst thing for Drake London would be if Desmond Ritter comes in, they, they win games and they're not necessarily throwing the ball any more than they were with Marcus Mariota because <laughs> then they're thinking, yeah, well, right. maybe we can rely on Ritter at least for 23, go in with the same uh, approach and... And then you have Kyle Pitts coming back. You have Drake London. Who knows if they draft a higher end receiver? And now that pie, it's getting split up a little bit more. So, yeah. and and that's a small pie to begin with. Right. I mean, right. you've got Tyler Algier. What more do you need? <laughs> I. That's true. That's true. How about uh, we're talking super flex here? Kyler Murray just got injured. Would you trade Kyler Murray for Josh Jacobs? Was that too far? No, no. I I, I would take Kyler Murray. But again, I'm thinking about specific leagues that I have Josh Jacobs. Uh, one very specific league. I have a first round buy. Uh, it, it's a nice prize pull. I'm not going to lie. I'm trying to win that money. Mm. Uh, what a novel trading. idea. I know. I know. Uh, winning. Wow. Who, 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 no, trying no, to nobody win. in, nobody in the know? dynasty space ever wants to win. Uh-huh. I don't, it's always about How just, much money do you get for having four first next year? Uh, pr- pride and enjoyment. Yeah, that's all. Uh, so there, I would be very hesitant in those situations. But again, if I had to give it a split situation, if I'm not in a great situation, like once we hit off season mode, I would take Kyler in every spot. You know, I, I know there, yeah. there is certainly a level of concern and a level of concern. That's like my, uh, you know, drink phrase tonight. Yeah, all right. Let's go. Uh, I'm concerned about everything, guys. I'm concerned about everything. But with Kyler Murray, it's concerning you know, times. It's concerning. He's a rushing quarterback, torn ACL in December. Let's say it's a nine to twelve month uh it's a weird return vibe to play. in general, too. And you know he's just gonna attack yeah. that rehab yeah. with, you know, everything he's got. Too, Bigger you know? and he's not gonna be playing any video games, guys. <laughs> You know, they could a hand killer, but not be a video game. <laughs> so he, he, we might be able to write off most of 23 for Kyler Murray oh, as well. Yeah. Like really? I, I mean, at least half of it to be back to maybe <laughs> mm-hmm. where we were comfortable scoring the fantasy points that you get with the rushing quarterback, which is another discussion for another time. We all love the rushing quarterbacks, but mm-hmm. right now it is kind of, you know, you like them, you kind of need them in, in, in dynasty super flex or whatever. But right now there's a lot of nicked up, banged up, uh, you know, running quarterbacks who are getting themselves in a little bit of trouble who aren't helping you out, even though, even though they're so great, but we'll, we'll, we'll take that for, for another time. Who, who, who ahead of schedule your, isn't something you're going to hear with Kyler Murray's <laughs> rehab. Who was, uh, no. who was your, uh, wide receiver, rookie wide receiver one, uh, coming into this year? Was it 
Drake or where Garrett it, Wilson? It, it, it was Drake, okay. London, okay. and then and then I had Traylon Burks. I took okay. him in so, our okay, mock so draft. Burks. But, so Burks or or Josh Jacobs. Jacobs. Uh, it's going to be the same exact answer okay. as London, okay. honestly. Right. I had them in the same tier. Okay. All right. I like what I've seen from Burks. I really yeah, do. It's been a nice resurgence here. Um, How could you not? Except for that fucking hit. hit. Yeah. Oh, my God. Hey, he held on to that. He like, did. Sure did. I, it's because he locked I get, up, I think. <laughs> I, more, think more yeah, I, think he, I think he locked up. If I get hit like that, I don't. Not even like that. If I get hit at all, call the call the uh, the cemetery. Get my plot lined up. I'm dead. Yeah. Dig me I'm up. Done. Call my friends. I'm definitely done playing football. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, that was uh, like so, so many big hits this year, man. Mm. Like stop injuring our dudes. Oh, right now well, going into these fucking, playoffs is, if a, they, is a nightmare. If they throw the fucking guy out, they, they're talking like about, they do in fucking they're, college. They're talking about doing. That. They don't give a fuck about these fines. Throw the fucking guy out. So 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 I the only I want to I just want to argue the college thing drains me because there needs to be at least and I know it's hard to judge intent, but it, you mm-hmm. can kind of almost tell it some of the times in the college thing. It's like, ah, I, I don't know. And they can really be huge. So I don't want to necessarily go Clemson down that lot down that road. Here we but go. but and I'm still begging for it to happen. You know, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. If that's anyway. Let's keep it. Moving you got to err on the side of caution. You get you got all these guys getting knocked the fuck nah. out. You got to You got to discourage it. You're trying to act like you're discouraging it. Kick these dudes out of the fucking game. If it's and if I don't mind these defensive backs getting kicked out. Because then you got to bring the backups in, yeah. and then we might get more fantasy Scoring points. Up. <laughs> you got, you got to. It's got to be the intent, and and it, and was it was it aggressive? Like I don't know that that was that hit was necessary. Like they're just trying to make a fucking play there on that one. I don't know if you could. I don't not comfortable throw. There there are certain times where you're like, one that guy is a known asshole, and two he's clearly fucking head hunting or doing right. some bullshit right. here instead of what he could be doing. Who was it? Was it CD um, Deuce? I, I I don't I don't remember who. I'm I'm okay. saying I'm not. I don't think. That that was the intention okay. on that play, because because um, because he's a known head hunter, and I think that was the Eagles game, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, yes, I believe so. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I, I if I recall correctly, like I didn't think it was a terribly dirty uh, hit. Egregious. Yeah, it was just kind of. Yeah, sick. like Tannehill threw it threw it over there, and there was two guys, and he he got yeah. Popped. Um, yeah. All right. Let's keep it moving here in the in the order of time, so we can at least get through three guys. No chance we're getting through more than that. Um, <laughs> All right, well, let's go Miles Sanders here. Um, so kind of Jacobs is kind of the one right there if we're just talking about these three guys. Sanders is probably, you know, two right after him and, and making some waves. He's he's going to go ahead and secure himself one of those same bags, it would seem. Um, 13 games for Miles Sanders, so same same threshold, which is great to see for Miles. It's been a, been a bugaboo of his um, to, you know, not be able to complete uh, the entire season. Um, and, and so again, all these numbers that I'm using, I should have stated this on the first are filtered through PFF at 20% of 275 attempts. Um, so that's where I'm getting the, uh, the numbers, uh, Just where they rank real, man. on Just those. Keep it 100. Uh, well, all, all I do is keep it 100. All we do no is cap. put out fire content. No cap. 100% real talk. All facts. Um, all entertainment. facts, all those things. Um, so Miles Sanders is, is, uh, graded out at 86.8 for PFF's run grade. That's fifth. RB10, uh, 199.3 for his season total, 15.3 points per game. He will be 26th heading into next season. He turns 26 May uh, 1st, uh, 264 attempts. That's tied for 7th. 1,068 yards is tied for 5th. Um, his yards per attempt, 5.2. That's good for 6. Zero fumbles for old Ooh. Miles there. Um, 11 TDs tied for 3rd. Now, that was a problem of his a little bit, right? Something something with, with Miles here that I don't think we're getting the full complement of is the targets. Only 23 and 18 catches, um, which I, I, not a think, ton of volume I think that's in his wheelhouse, there. but it's not it's not really there. But it's 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 nice to see the other numbers that we just the attempts and, and yardage be high for him. Um, and then uh, yards per contact per attempt. Um, he's seventh with 600 or uh, yards per co- yards after contact 640. He's seventh, and you know, out of um, th- there's not a whole lot of guys with over 200 attempts in, ahead of him, or rather, the guys. Some of the guys ahead of him don't have over 200 attempts. Um, so just as a threshold for yards after contact, there yards after contact per attempt 3.14. That's good for 18. 
uh, 37 missed tackles force is good for 10th um, yards 10 plus or runs over 10 plus or more 31 good for third design runs of 15 yards or more 11 that's good for seventh um, so you know miles having a having a really good year here and um, let's just same conversation we just had with Jacobs one thing I want to add Go to ahead. Miles Sanders uh, just going back and watching some of the cut-ups of some of the games that he's played He's really come a long way from where I had him evaluated coming out of college where he was kind of a perennial bouncer. He was always just trying to get outside, just continuously trying to win on his athleticism. And watching these games, like, he's showing patience. He's cutting up field. He's he's getting north and south. Like, it's a joy to watch. Now, I don't know how much of that is – his maturation and how much how easy it is out there with that offensive line because those dudes are fucking crushing it. You know, it's it's easy to I run think the that's ball. Part of the reason like why that. you're seeing this attempt number be so high is because they have kind of coached him into maybe where they 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 want him to be and operate this offense uh, a little differently. But I just had to give a shout out because yeah. I was crushing him early in his career about how he doesn't really know how to play the game. He's just athletic and bounces it and and won a lot in college doing that. But now he he's like a true running back. He's out. He's waiting for the hole. To open up and hits it, and and he's trying to. He's not thinking about going outside. He's trying to get north and south. I didn't. I didn't think I was going to see that. You know, watching these cutups, and I was. I just had to give a shout out to to uh, Miles Sanders. Obviously, this offense again. Before I open it up to 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 you over there, uh, JB, um, is is affording him more opportunities in the red zone. But they were being a little funky with red zone carry. So the the touchdown number is good to see. Plus Jalen Hurts. Rushing so many touchdowns in the number being tied for third is is really great with Miles Sanders here. Um, and and it's, it's sort of a you know, we'll get to Montgomery in a second, but that's, you know, something that certainly is hurting him. Justin Fields breaking off long runs and, and running in touchdowns, which is, is a problem for, you know, some running backs with the great rushing quarterbacks, even though, you know, they are affording more red zone opportunities because they can move the ball. But everybody's eating, um, you know. Sometimes it does get a little weird there with Boston Scott and, and Gainwell, and they're kind of splitting up some of those targets and even some of those touchdowns. So I think there's even more room for Miles Sanders if he doesn't stay an eagle to really grow and, and have even more targets and touchdown opportunities. Obviously, if he goes somewhere terrible where the offense isn't as good. but um, I'd like him to stay in Philly, but let's hear what your take is on all that, JB. Yeah, I actually agree with you. I would like to see him stay in Philly the way he's grown into that offense. I mean, I I, I couldn't agree more uh, with what you said, Jason. But, you know, w- with Miles Sanders, first of all, he has more rushing touchdowns this year than he has his first three years combined. All right. All right. And a lot of that does come down to Casey, like you mentioned, the usage in the red zone like we got a lot of Boston Scott last year. We got a lot of Jordan Howard. And yeah, some of that was because of the games that Miles Sanders missed. But Miles Sanders, you know, he, he's extremely efficient. He, he's getting the work where it counts. Of course, I would like to see the the uh, targets and receptions go back up to where they were, to, you know, at the beginning of his career. And there were some concerns, you know, drops were an issue, uh, uh, route running at times. I think that was a concern for people. But overall, I you have to like what you've seen. But for Miles Sanders, I mean, you look at the last three weeks for him. Uh, uh, three weeks ago, he had Green Bay, 143 yards, two touchdowns. And then Tennessee, you know, 24 yards, but found the end zone. And then the Giants, 144 yards, two touchdowns. So I think this would be a little bit of a different conversation three weeks ago. You know, but so overall, I think where we're talking about him with Josh Jacobs, number one with these out of these guys, Miles Sanders, number two, I think that I think that's reasonable. And for me, if I'm putting a price tag on Miles Sanders, he is. Uh, and I, I kind of talked about this uh, when I was on with you guys talking about the commanders wide receivers, uh, you know, d- describing a player as being maybe a buy a, a, on the buy side of like neutral or vice versa, where it's not necessarily like a strong buy or sell. But for Miles Sanders, he would be on the the buy side of neutral for me. I have him in that 15 to 21 tier, averaging out a lot of different uh 
sources, you know, the crowdsourcing, everybody's favorite website, Keep Trade Cut. I think the data is questionable, mm-hmm. but I think that gives you a real time overreaction to things. And the same with Fantasy Calc. Uh, that's another good one in terms of quick reactions. But uh, he's coming at uh, running back 20 there. So for me, I think there is an opportunity. Like, there's still going to be people, I think, just because of their names. Like, you could probably get Miles Sanders plus a small piece for Najee Harris. Again, just because Miles Sanders, he kind of has that stink to him. Again, certainly more so prior to the last three weeks. Uh, But I I think that's possibly something that you could look into uh, in terms of 23 picks. I'm even further back now. I'm looking at that 109 to 112 range. That's going to be a lateral move for me. So ideally, if I can get, if I if I'm looking at your team and I see that, you know, you didn't get a first round by, your team's a little questionable, I'll move Miles Sanders for your 23 first. And then I would look to backfill the position, even if I was contending with another another piece. But yeah, there's certainly a difference between Jacobs and Sanders for me. I and I think that's maybe mid to late second value overall. But uh, yeah, I mean, Miles Sanders has had a heck of a season and for him to stay in Philly uh, familiar with, with what's going on, really excelling with Jalen hurts, opening up lanes for him. That offensive line has been strong. So I think Jason, maybe that's the reason you're not seeing him dancing as much. You know, he knows those holes are going to be there. He knows that Jalen hurts and his mobility is going to be an advantage to him. So uh, yeah, let's see Miles Sanders stay. I'm actually surprised you would go that high with the rookie pick. Uh, yeah, I, I thought, I thought for, for sure he'd for be a, a hard even, sell for you. Yeah, it'd be 26 in in May before the next season starts. When, when we when we were That's just some looking hot at fire there. When we were just looking I, at Josh Jacobs, you know, you look at the the snap percentage and all that. And if you're looking at sleeper, pretty much all of Josh Jacobs' snaps percentages in that green 80 mm-hmm. percent. Miles Sanders all in that cautionary yellow 55, 58, 65, 54, 53 percent. Just um, kept them healthy. And maybe, um, but being pretty efficient with the touches and, and breaking away uh, bigger runs here as of as of late. Um, My concern would be if he does go elsewhere and, you know, we go through early stages of the offseason, we don't hear anything about a potential extension, and we think the writing's on the wall that he is going to be playing somewhere else, then I think – the efficiency comes down and you have to see an uptick in usage. And just like you said, uh, maybe then th- there's a, an injury concern, you know, what we've seen previously in past seasons with him. So I, where, where, if you had to guess where I was comfortable moving a rookie pick for him, what would you have thought since you thought I came I, in too I high? Put, I would have put you right at the bottom of the first, like one twelve would have been like I'd where you wanted in the to go. Second. Yeah, and basically, kind of top end of the second yeah. would, and pl- may- maybe you're saying then you need a little, a little added on the back end of that with a third or something, you know, some other sort of action, some combo platter action. Um, but one thing to note with them is that Shane Steichen is, is probably there's not a whole lot of hot coaching offensive candidates right now, and Shane Steichen is the, their OC, and I, there's a, probably a really good chance of that, that OC walks, so they'll either have to hire mm-hmm. within or find somebody else new, which can change the dynamic of some things uh, as far as the way the offense runs. But um, who, Sirianni is, is, is often also offensive minded. So you would think it would be a, a little bit more of a, of a Shanahan style thing where you can lose the guy and still hold the system kind of together. Uh, so maybe not too big of a concern there. Yeah. And back to the, the rookie pick. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm go, go for ahead. it. Uh, I mentioned earlier, I have that drop off between one Oh eight and one Oh nine. So, for me, if I'm contending, and I, especially if I secured that first round buy, that's when I'd be comfortable moving that pick. And then the drop off at 108, I think it goes down to 110. If those two quarterbacks and Levis and Richardson get the draft capital that I had mentioned earlier. So I, I would be very cautious and careful. Pay attention to, to your team. Don't, don't get, you know, false hope overall. But if you secure that first round buy and you're comfortable, but maybe you have a, a running back that, you know, maybe you have a Ramondre that you were counting on. He gets a little dinged up. You have uh, da, 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 Kenny da, Walker, da, maybe, who you were getting on, or Damian Pierce, who you were getting some Travis you know, production Etienne from. Travis Etienne hasn't been coming through for you recently. 
Pierce is a great one, possibly all three weeks. Now you need somebody to backfill, and that could be a situation where you're looking to move that late first. So, yeah, I I, I don't think we're we're completely talking different languages here. Yeah. All right, let's hear let's, from the Penn State grad. He's got the we are. Uh, first of all, we're talking about number one running back recruit, Miles Sanders, first of all, by the way. He's taking him to the dashboard concert. Oh, for sure. Him and him and Saquon both, for sure. Which one? Who, Journey who? Brown, all of them. Oh, shout out Journey Brown. <laughs> Got engaged today. Shout out Journey Brown. Don't stop believing. Um, I don't think that. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Anyways. Boy, dumb up. All right, what so, you got? Are you so, loving some Miles Sanders, huh? Right now? I'm even surp- I'm going to piggyback what you guys said. I'm even surprised that you were as high on him, JB, as well there, too. So, um, I was reading the um, uh, everyone's favorite duo mock draft of Mc, uh, McShay and Kuyper. Bijan. Bijan at 105? Mm-hmm. Come on. That's wild. But I mean. To the Eagles for the, the rest Eagles. of the listeners. Yeah, for the Eagles. Uh, to the Eagles. Yeah, to the Eagles. Because they're like, why would they pay for Miles Sanders $8 million a year when they can pay Bijan four? I mean, makes Who, a lot of sense. Whose pick do they have? The Saints. Not, they have the Saints pick. Saints. <laughs> For who? That was the Olave trade. Yeah. I think. Yes, correct. <clears throat> Got um, um, all right, well, yeah. That would Let be ask. devastating to Miles so, Sanders case. So, well, but he, but Casey wants him moving from, from Philly even so he can get more targets and touchdown opportunities. I, I, I've... Obviously, what we're seeing right now is is fantastic, but I I I would I think I would prefer to maybe you know let him let that butterfly peacock spread his wings and maybe get you know you're getting greedy here to try to get the best of both worlds. You're getting the attempt numbers right now again tied for seventh and touchdown um, opportunities based t- on that. Offense. Sure, sure, sure. And and it's what you what I, what we're getting here with eleven touchdowns with a running back. Shit, you could even say that's probably going to regress. That's no that's, matter what. Jalen Hurts is is. That's a crazy number uh, for TDs for a rushing quarterback, although they're scoring touchdowns at a super high clip uh, currently, and we're probably... It's fucking Oprah out there. You get a touchdown. And you get a touchdown. Philly's number two right now. Uh, when they get in the red zone, they score a touchdown on 74% of their oh. their their uh, drives. Oh. So with the, with the TDs being that high and enough t- attempts and yardage that we don't need the, the targets and catches to be anything crazy, but... We could we could tamp those numbers down a little bit, get some more catches, and I, I think I think what we're seeing from Miles Sanders right now isn't isn't just because he's on a really good offense that obviously helps, but I think we're seeing I think you said it, the, the maturation of him and and the style and you know you, you go you, you put Miles Sanders on on the the Steelers and I don't think you have he has any much more success than Najee Harris is having. Obviously, Miles Sanders is much more athletic than Najee Harris. I'm just putting a bad offensive line in front of him rather mm-hmm. than a than a great yeah, offense. We saw that line. at Penn State when the Penn State's offensive line was trash and he was that's when he became bouncy because he was trying to be uber athletic. Let's we went the picks. Let's hit a couple players here and we'll probably touch on some of the same ones. Let's go Ramondre right off the rip. Um I think that tells it all. <laughs> it's that's tough. I have tell me you hate here. Ramondre without telling me here. you hate Ramondre. No, no. Um, What's your level of concern <laughs> about <laughs> drink? Man, the level of concern is nowhere close to the Kyler level of concern. Jesus, right? right there. <laughs> yeah, you trying to get me drunk? I, well, yeah. level of concern. Anyway, um, <laughs> but, um, so I, I, I would leave. I would take Ramondre. I would take Ramondre over Miles Sanders. Uh, and, and again, Woo! part of it goes down to. The, I'm a I'm a sucker for target share, and Ramondre is getting those sweet sweet dump offs, mm. you know. So even if they do split work, uh, give me the upside with what he's getting in terms of the usage, as opposed to a super efficient Miles Sanders who's doing it on the ground, where things could really change with the new landing spot. So yeah, give me Ramondre there. Uh, agreed. Agreed. Anybody disagree? Nope. You taking Ramondre too? Yeah, I had him ranked. I had him ranked higher than him in the running back show we did a couple weeks ago. Well, what about these last three weeks? <laughs> I don't get future points for the for the last three weeks. I think I think I know the answer since we just put Stevenson there, and I would assume that he's ahead of this guy. But Kamara, I have them in the same tier. 
you know, you're buying back a few years with Miles Sanders, and you got to think that after beating the shit out of Suspension somebody, looming. <laughs> yeah. you ha- I, right? Let's, go, let's like, go Chubb. Let's go Chubb. He's a little bit younger than those other older running backs. Probably pretty. Give me the give me the, give me the full Chubb. Give me you going Chubb. Over I'm going Chubb. Sanders. Mixon. I'm going Mixon. Going Mixon. Um, how about Damian Pierce? Come on. I'm going. I'm going Mouse. Of course. My guy. Of course. <laughs> I'm going Mouse. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, you don't have to apologize to me. You don't have to apologize to me. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So you're going Miles too over Pierce? Yeah. I'm taking Pierce just to reset the clock. I don't think they're all that different of a player. Um, just one guy's on a horrible offense right now and the other guys on the we, best one. we saw we saw we saw one yeah you know, which we don't know where he's going to be uh you know going next, next year pierce year. is certainly going to be in texansville there but you know maybe we get cj shroud and maybe we you know maybe we can get this offense we saw them really when they were when they were captain try hard those first couple of weeks the texans didn't <laughs> look that bad and they were keeping it competitive now you just had it in in-house uh in-state Mopping. rivals there coming up with with the cowboys and it seemed like you know there was a big spread there and they kind of might have might have brought out you know mills came back in but there was a stretch there where it it looked like the texans had stopped giving any sorts of fucks um and obviously given pierce wasn't wasn't great in there and this week pierce was pretty decent and i I think you know got hurt near the end of that game probably could have had some more points the whole fourth quarter um uh, you know i i i I, I, I will say this I, I have them in the same tier, so I'm saying Sanders over Damian Pierce. The the great opportunity here is that if if Casey, if you're contending, maybe not you specifically because you you lean Pierce anyway, but if you had Pierce in your starting lineup, and now there's a, a gaping hole there, the kind of kind of like the holes that Miles Sanders ru- is running through with that Philly uh, offensive line, I I do believe that especially with some recent performances that you get Damian Pierce plus like Miles Sanders for Damian Pierce plus a mid second. I then will certainly switch the Pierce side uh, or Damian Pierce and uh, Rondell Moore. Yeah. I I think another injured player. Uh, So something like that, there are certainly situations that make sense that you could get done. So that's what I would be looking at. DPJ on there. I he I have him the same tier as Rondell Moore. Mm-hmm. All right, uh, J.K. Dobbins, little reemergence here, but been injured. Uh, would you swap for little the, Mo with the gimpy leg? Little little younger, uh, came in pretty young. Now he's had well, had an injury. Smooching with here. everybody. We I, li- listen. Last year, I couldn't find Home Alone or Home Alone Two on any <laughs> network. Like it was never on. Now, uh, free form. It's freaking on there every day. Like. <laughs> And we'll turn it on, and I'm like, we just watched this, but like, I'm, it's either that or I'm going to watch reruns of Seinfeld I've seen a thousand times. Yeah. So let's keep. Let's, it's I'm the right, holiday I'm season. I'm right in the middle of season three on Seinfeld right now. Oh, man. Have, have you watched you the watch Joe DiVola where they trade the helmet for the radar detector and Kramer gets kicked in the head? Have you you've watched it before? Or oh, is this the first time through? times I've seen. Seinfeld. Oh, okay, okay. A million times. I've Y'all, seen. I'm finishing up the most recent season of Curb. So good. Oh, oh, I don't God. think I've seen the most recent one. Yeah. What's it ending with? No, I've seen the Latte Larry's was the last one that I. Yeah, this is the next one. Yeah, I haven't he's, seen that he's, yet. He's like I trying to. That. He's trying. He's courting a city councilwoman to try and get her to repeal the law that you need a fence around your pool <laughs> because someone died in his pool and the guy's daughter is like Upset forcing him it. to be an actor actress in his show. And she's ruining it, and it's just this whole fucking. Sh- he's fucking crushing it though. It is. I've been laughing out loud. It's not that often that you fucking laugh out loud sitting by yourself watching shit. Like this is only a few shows. I feel is like is the where, city councilman Fawn Moscato? Yeah, sounds like an, an episode of New Girl. No. Um, but, uh, anyway, I'll take Dobbins. Dobbins? Dobbins? Take, you're, you're taking Dobbins. You're taking Dobbins. I'll take Dobbins Be- because just. Uh, see, you talk about. You you talk about the the red zone upside, you know, like it's it's all it's a very similar situation, right? You 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 have a, a Russian quarterback, you have uh, red zone opportunities, and I know it's been a little tough sledding for Baltimore recently, but 
overall, I, I you know, I, you're missing Dobbins, you're missing Rashad Bateman, uh, Lamar is dinged up. I think that's bound to happen. Uh, but then you're buying back what a year and a half. And you, you get the extra year here on the contract. You know that J.K. Dobbins is going to be in Baltimore. Both have question marks, but that's the reason I'm going to go Dobbins over Sanders. But again, same tier. If I can pivot from one to the other and get a plus, sign me up. How do how does the landing spot – I mean, obviously we're just speculating now. How does the landing spot affect – how you're gonna think with these guys like like what like what would be like the top landing spots for these free agents is it is it kansas city is it buffalo is it miami is it i think i miami is certainly one that makes sense i'm seeing mocks that that have buffalo taking another running back i'm like just like just stop i know devin singletary he's gonna be gone but like just, just grab some free agent there well, yeah, um, I, don't, I don't want any running back that i well, like to go to buffalo no matter what they do they, they don't want to run it no matter well, who they have, that, they don't want that, to run it. In that same mock draft, McShay, Mc, 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 McShay, McShay and Kuiper had Denver taking Jameer Gibbs. Yeah, that yeah. doesn't make in any the, sense either. In the first, too. Um, so ideal, sense. ideal landing spot. I mean, it's like the usual suspects. Like I, I you mentioned Tyler Algier, but I would love to see Atlanta. Uh, you know, if they bolster that that uh, offensive. Uh, the offensive side of the ball, uh, Carolina, Carolina, Carolina. I mean, Deontay Foreman has looked good, you know. So it, the, the the team is in complete shambles. <laughs> I, uh, da, 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 da. I'm just going through teams here. Da, 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 da. Javante or or Miles Sanders? I'll take Javante. Okay. Yeah. How about Kittle? Let's throw a tight end in there. Tight oh, end him. He's been, been a bit weird uh, for him, and it's he's you know he's great, but it's just like it seems like it's I, I'm I'm a huge Niners guy, and I'm I'm I think I'm just off the fucking Kittle train, man. It's so hard to to start him every week, and and because you of the 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 cost, the output that you get from week to week is not. And obviously, I know the tight end landscape is tough, but um, yeah, I read some stat about how after this last week. Evan Ingram jumped from like tight end fourteen to four, uh-huh. <laughs> one week scoring, which he did put up a fuck ton of points. But like, that's wild. But one week's propping Joe Mixon up pretty heavy. Now that Mixon's been pretty good, but that, that fifty burger, yeah, really shot him up too. Okay, so on on this uh, on this week's episode of Dynasty Theory, we talked about uh, targeting certain players as contenders. And we got into a discussion, Dan, Mitch and myself of CMC, Brandon, I, you can George Kittle. And we were discussing, uh, value beyond 22 versus cost to acquire versus immediate production. And what made sense if we were getting every factor in terms of players we were targeting, even in two PPR Kittle was the last piece for me. Like I, he, I uh, I have a couple teams that I have Kelsey and, you know, maybe I'm out of the playoffs, uh, you know, finish one spot out. And I have people offering me Kittle plus a small piece. Hey, you know, four years age difference. Even if I'm rebuilding, I'm going to stick with Kelsey. Like, I, I think over the next two years, that's not even close still. I mean, hell, Kelsey could be 48 years old, still chugging along. We don't know. Uh, but yeah, I, even in two PPR settings, I would lean Miles Sanders. For the tight because, end. Yes, for the tight end. Yeah. Uh, even two PPR for receptions isn't helping Damian Pierce, but uh, um, I had to. <laughs> I had Bazinga. <laughs> yeah. uh, no, no, no. But uh, for Miles Sanders, I, not to say he has uh, insulation in his value by any means because he's a running back, but for a tight end, even a higher end tight end, I, I could see Kittle continue to slip. If his name wasn't George Kittle, I don't, I don't know if he's. Now it'll be interesting to see what happens without Debo here and moving forward for a couple of weeks. If he can get the the points per game back up and really mm-hmm. help his his draft stock, but I think just with McCaffrey sticking around there now and Debo going to be there locked up, we'll see what happens with Ayuk. Uh, yep. Elijah Mitchell will come back. You know, we just. I don't think we're none of the quarterbacks 
regardless of who it is, are good enough to really be supporting three or four elite players. In not the offense itself is very good, and they can have good games. Uh, but to be, you know, very confident in the startability week in week out to what you're paying for Kittle, and I think it started to slip last year, and it'll probably continue to slip a little bit. Still, probably be higher than maybe what it, what what it's been worth, which is you know sort of what you were just saying. Do you really know how and good Trey at, Lance is? The, right. And, Look at the way Kittle plays. I mean, he's a WWE guy in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go, going crazy. Uh, but then, like, when we see Lance next year, most likely, who's to say this isn't a Atlanta Falcons situation where we just don't see the volume? And I, I think you might have been mentioning that as I cut you off. And listen, guys, I'm just so jacked to, to talk to you guys. I yeah. told you. Fuck, I'm just so excited. Jack I apologize. Let, let me let me let's hit one rookie wide receiver and we'll move on to the last guy Montgomery here. Um, and maybe maybe we'll throw in another one more rookie if this is too easy. Christian Watson or Miles Sanders? Oh my god, you keep giving me guys in the same tier for me. Well, that's uh, good then. I'm right. I'm right it, on. I'm right on value. You're, then. you're right on the money. I. It's I kind of what go. I do. I don't know. <laughs> you know. <laughs> uh, this is like the Gabriel Davis situation on steroids. Like he's getting what 40% touchdown rate, like absolutely absurd. And I'll cheer his hat. And does, does Romeo got to regress though, huh? Bust on like, Gabriel. I mean, 40% holy. What's I mean, your level of we concern talking? with Christian Watson's touchdown variance? Yeah. We were talking about the quarterback is next year. We were talking about Jahan Dotson at the beginning of the season yeah, yeah, with yeah, yeah. those four or five touchdowns. And, you know, I, I don't know if he scored one since. Yeah, when he played, the next game he played, I'm pretty sure. No, he had one game and then the next game he scored. Yeah, he was out for like five weeks. Can't score a touchdown if you're out, you know? But can the guys I draft, the guys I draft can. Yeah. <laughs> they don't. Uh, da, 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 da. Give me Miles Sanders over Watson. Okay, how about Burks? Burks. Okay, all right. I had to get there. Well, when we when we discussed uh, Damian Pierce before the season started, were we putting the threshold RB two to wager for was it targets or receptions? Because we put a oh fifty my on. God. It. Would, would we have been talking about receptions or targets? Couldn't tell. We were I, arguing about I don't how know, many but you, you got to get your get. listeners to tell you, so they got to go back listen to the episode tonight. Yeah. Or whenever you throw this on. So go back, listen to that episode, and you can tell Jason Casey. Like, and the crunched the numbers. Well, he was on pace to pass 50 targets. We've got a couple of these, and, and from here on out, when we do, like, we're going into next season. We didn't just, really make a bet. I know, we discuss, I know, I know. We, we almost, we discussed we're gonna have a We're going to have a board of bets that we need to keep that week, because we've got, we've got a couple that we're, like, questioning what the totals were on things, and we just need to, we need to get this all straightened up. Um, and, and, and the ship run tight. All right. So let's, let's get one more in here. So get you out of here, um, in, in roughly an hour or so, um, let's yeah, go, right. Let's go. David Montgomery. He's on, he's got 12 games. Um, he's down a little bit this year. So he's, he's, he's been arguably, uh, the most value. Well, Jacobs has been good. Montgomery has been kind of a league winner here for, for a, a few years. Um, we don't have to tell, JB, how good yeah. Monty's been. 68.7 is his PFF score. Um, I believe the prior two years in a row, he was RB1 the last six games of the season. Mm-hmm. So that's what he means when he right. says league wiener. Um, 135 points, 11.3 points per game, 160 attempts, um, 641 yards. Let's go for 22nd. 4.0 uh, uh, yards per attempt, one fumble. Four touchdowns, 30 targets, um, 25 catches. That's good for 24th. Yards per route run, 1.18. That's good for 18th. Uh, the elusive rating is uh, 85, which is good for 8th. Um, yards per contact, 484. Or yards after contact, 484. That's good for 16th. Uh, yards contact per attempt, uh 3.01, I believe, or 3.03. 3.03. Uh, 27th. Missed tackles forced, 42. Tied for eighth. 10 plus y- rush. Uh, 10 plus rushes. 10 plus. Y- <laughs> Jesus Christ. Rushes over 10 yards. <laughs> 15. Good for 24. <coughs> 21st. And uh, design runs were over 15 yards or more. Two. For, that's good for 48th. So, so not as strong a season here. TD's way down, 
everything sort of down for Monty. He's been a little nicked. He missed a game, and then one game he went out pretty early. Yeah. Um, so that's almost like missing two games. We're big body. La- the last three weeks, he's RB7, really heating up. Her- got a bye. Perfect time for him. Herbert he got could out of the way. He finish another RB1. Well, I mean, he's it's lining up right It's lining weeks. up right now that Herbert ah! could do or uh, Montgomery could do it again with Herbert out. Again, a contract guy, which is why we're talking about him here. Um, probably doing the least to secure his bag right now. Um, and you know, people don't love the least athletic probably out of these guys. So people don't love that. He's got Philly um, and Buffalo on the list. Though, great. So. Yep. A great pass catcher, um, and a, and a pretty solid route runner, um, has been plagued by just a bad situation and a bad offensive line. Whereas Miles Sanders has been, you know, gifted, uh, a strong situation and a strong offensive line for most of his career. Um, and Montgomery at times, especially rookie, a couple of years after there, the amount of contact behind the line of scrimmage that, that he was having to wade through defenders was always the first contact behind the line of scrimmage, whatever those numbers are that are, he was always right near the top of like the amount of de- the, the defenders that touch him behind the line of scrimmage, um, always, always near the top because that offensive line was so bad. And, and the elusiveness is, is, is very strong there with Montgomery. We're big Montgomery guys. How do we see this Montgomery uh, thing playing out? He's probably not going to be a bear next season. Justin Fields probably hurting some of the production right now for him because really they're kind of an inept team if Justin Fields doesn't really, you know, just kind of put the team on his back. Um, what are we thinking with, with David Montgomery here? And then we'll kind of, you know, t- do the same as we've been doing with these last two guys. Yeah, the last three weeks, certainly, we've seen four targets, four targets, and five targets. Prior to that, the first, what, nine games of the season, he averaged about a target and a half per game. So it's kind of – it goes back to the offense in general. Like, we were getting Justin Fields, who really needed time to come into his own. They had the mini buy early in the season, and then not necessarily a huge uptick in passing volume, but that offense did move a little bit better. David Montgomery at cost, I'm fine with him. And when I say at cost, like – you know, I, I I would mid second plus. Like I'm not moving a first for him. So maybe right. at cost, I'm not a huge fan of his. Out of the guys we've discussed, Josh Jacobs, Miles Sanders, David Montgomery, he is the one out of that group that I could see going elsewhere and landing on not necessarily irrelevant by any means but maybe landing on the wrong side of a 50-50 split. You know, maybe he's the one. You have a rookie come in somewhere. You have David Montgomery for a nice one-two punch, and it's like 60-40 between those two guys. Um, maybe New England signs him. I Yeah, right. That would be uh, terrible. Yeah. And, and, or or, or right. Miami doesn't do anything in the draft. They bring David Montgomery in, and not now – Business is booming. We're talking. Right. You know, but overall right now, I have him in the low end running back to for dynasty purposes range. And I think for the most part, that aligns fairly well with market. Uh, I mean, there's plenty of wide receivers. I would take over them. Quarterbacks, you got to get a little, little gross there cross positionally for me. And Jason, like you said, the, the remaining schedule here, if you're looking to acquire him because you're contending, you might be able to find some better options when you look at cost to acquire versus immediate production. You got to think you're going to be behind in those games. So maybe you get the that PPR bump. I hope so. I, you know, but then it. We talked about Miles Sanders and even Josh Jacobs. They have that touchdown upside. We don't really have that with David Montgomery right now. But if you can get through, if you get through Philly and Buffalo, you got Detroit in Week 17. But they've been very good against the run. They, they, they've the been last, better against the, over the last since I think since Week Nine or Ten. They've okay. been a, a pretty decent run, which is only four weeks or so. But and the problem with I mean they they just played in Week Ten. They don't dump they, it down they, as much. The, the, right, right. They'd rather and I think take that's part, off. Fair. I think that's you know? part of the reason we see that with Miles Sanders and the dip in his usage in the the Passing. receiving game as well. But he's putting up eleven touchdowns. Right. You know, David not Montgomery that much at what? all. I mean, I guess neither are the Bears. So 
Yeah, still could be. All right, let's let's get a big finish for Dave Montgomery. That'd be awesome. Three years in a row finishing his RB one the last six weeks. I also season. think out of the three, he's the least likely to remain with his current team. Oh, for sure, a hundred percent. Does yeah. seem like they hate him for some he's, reason. He's gone, even though. This is not the player. regime. I mean, neither is Josh Jacobs, but they seemed like they kind of they they didn't really have another option at running back. They tried to bring a couple in, and he just clearly emerged. And whereas Herbert was there, that that regime didn't necessarily draft Herbert either. But you know, they 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 have no reason to lean heavy into Montgomery, where they could kind of use both guys, see what they have in Herbert, see what they want to do next year. Um, right. And and Montgomery is, you know, I think Montgomery's a really good back. I think he's kind of he's very versatile. He's obviously not super explosive, but he certainly can handle the workload. He's 5'11", 224. Um, I think he can be sort of your workhorse. Um, and, and I like his passing game chops. And I, I like how elusive he is for him not being super athletic. I think that part of his game of, of being able to avoid tackles and evade uh, defenders is 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 very strong. Um, There's something that makes sense. Maybe a one-two punch with Javante in Denver. It's a team that has a decent defense. They want to run the ball. They, you know, they, they were uh, in the McShay draft targeting a, a running back. So maybe that's something that makes sense or a David Montgomery and ETN combo. Yeah. You know, so <laughs> I hate it for, I, the other, a, for the incumbent. I'm from a real, I think real life NFL perspective. I think those are teams that I think those make sense. Or what if we start seeing like uh, just a flip flop, Miles Sanders to the Raiders, Jacobs to the Bears, uh, David Montgomery to Philly. So you know, just musical chairs. Who knows? It certainly could be an option, and and we and we never know exactly what's going to happen here. Um, yeah, I hate to kind of speculate. You know, that's the best never, part, though. <sighs> ah, Montgomery's hey, Montgomery has definitely no. uh, ended up on the low end of the totem pole here, whereas I think. As far as draft wise, over the last couple of years, he's he's managed to stay right with or above these guys um, in a lot of scenarios. Whereas draft wise, mm-hmm. this year, obviously depending on where he lands, he's he's going to be below. He's right now at, at RB twenty uh, twenty six in DLF ADP. Um, so you know, definitely below those other guys. Would you rather have David Montgomery or Pat Fryermuth? In tight end premium, Obvious. yeah. Uh, even down to one point five premium, certainly one point seven five or two PPR. Or if you're starting two tight ends, I would take Fryermuth. But even in the the minimal one point five premium for tight ends, I'll take Fryermuth over Montgomery straight up. Everybody agree there, or mm. give me I, money. I, I like what's going on with with Pickett and Fryermuth. Um, and if we're getting 1.75, I, I, I'm sure. I don't know where what the scoring's at right now. Obviously, uh, Herbert's been in there, you know, muddying up the waters a little bit there. But I, I think what we're seeing from Fryermuth is is nice. Um, so I, I think that's pretty close for me. I think I might lean a little bit into Fryermuth and and where the where the landing spot is for Montgomery could certainly, you know, elevate him back above Fryermuth there. Um, how about Jerry Judy or David Montgomery? Judy. Judy, even with the bad Russell Wilson play. Yeah, and I'm still buying into that son of a bitch. I know. Three touchdowns last week from Judy. Judy. I know. How does Judy not now now how does Judy not get kicked out and Dave and fucking uh or get a penalty even thrown? Yeah, I know, right? And DJ Moore got penalized. Didn't even get fined. And 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 Bob Judy bumped the ref. He, right. he bumped the ref. I know there there's probably no like he's not trying to harm him, but right. still you can't right. Can't do that. You can't shit. touch officials. Well, he took his helmet off. Yeah, he took it. Yeah, he stormed across the field and bumped right into the ref and helmet off. And all right, Bateman injured Bateman or Monty. What Judy did taking his helmet off, just run around like a maniac. That's what my son does when he comes home from school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, just don't bump me, please. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> throwing the flag for sure. Yeah. Uh, this is this is team dependent for me. Uh if I'm contending deeper league, especially, but looking to bolster my lineup, I'll take Montgomery. Otherwise, give me Bateman. But I, I think that's super close. And, you know, a lot of question marks in, in Baltimore, too. 
Yeah, I think I'll, both of those guys are a nice buy right now. Yeah, I mm-hmm. agree with that. I would agree. I'll take Montgomery. I think. Um, yeah, but I, I'm buying Bateman as well. Right. Not out. Not not out on Bateman. Um, how about James Cook? Showed a little promise at a down game here. Uh, I don't remember where you were at with James Cook coming into this. Um, I know we talked a little bit about the Bills running back situation. Um, we're not going to get the Singletary, but. Um, I'll take Montgomery. I, I just think there's going to be. I, I do. Uh, they are going to bring somebody in, even though I, you know, earlier I, five minutes ago I said, no, 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 don't, don't draft anybody, don't do this, don't do that. But I, I and they, they don't want to utilize the running backs in Buffalo the way that we would like. So Montgomery to Buffalo, <laughs> probably hate it. Yeah, I wouldn't probably. love it. I don't. Uh, yeah, I'll take Montgomery though, straight up. It's, it's the Chiefs and the and we talked about it a little bit on the Monday show. The Chiefs and the Bills. Everybody gets so excited about the offense, but it's re- like, well, the, the running, Chiefs are supporting like two running backs right the now. The running backs are just, I mean, sort of. It's, it's shifted a little bit this year. Jared McKinnon so, season, sort of, but not really. I mean, Pacheco just recently you got it had to be an injury to Clyde edwards alaire to really solidify him being very startable week in week out and i i prefer i prefer both of those teams to find a little balance especially later on in the season but they just never seem to do the 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 chiefs are seeming a little more willing right now than than the um than the bills bills are but Mm -hmm. josh allen's you know equating for a lot more rushing than than mahomes is uh and that's certainly a factor in there um but let's see here um we talked about Fryer Muth. Goddard. You gotta take Goddard over Montgomery, Goddard. right? Yep. Um Pacheco. Oh, that's Montgomery all day. Yeah, I'm still taking Montgomery. Just like we said, the, the upside overall from week to week is going to be capped in Kansas City for a running back. And the, it's not like Pacheco's heavily involved in the passing game. Right. So I mean, when Kareem Hunt was doing all the things with Mahomes for the first yeah. like five weeks, it was fucking awesome until he got kicked off the team. Like when it's one guy, if you could get one guy, yeah, that was a long it'd be time awesome ago. for the Chiefs. They're down to throw it to him. They're down to scheme him. Time ago. Wide open. Yeah, that, that was a spaces. lifetime ago. That just feels like right. Yeah, but geez. it's same offense, same same same. Yeah, fucking I, probably the same coordinator. Like we, we've had we've had Andy Reid buy into Brian Westbrook at one point, and then after that, you know, it just just seem I don't know. It just seems like it's if they would, right? Well, I'm awesome. sure. And I know everyone just loses one guy. Everyone loses their mind about every skill position player there, and it's like it's really only a few, th- two skill positions in 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 Kansas City and and in Buffalo that really end up mattering at all, um, right? Uh, you know, so how about Antonio Gibson? I know that's probably uh, maybe uh, it's a good one. If Antonio Gibson was also a free agent, I would go Antonio Gibson, but he's going to sit there in that B-Rock. situation. I, and the dude got shot twice and he's looking pretty good. Yes. And I was, I was fairly out on him prior to the season, but I'm cheering for the kid. And I have a ton of Antonio Gibson, uh, you know, moved off a lot of his shares, bought some at a discount. But uh, yeah, with him being there in 23 still in Washington, I'll take Montgomery at a random landing spot uh, right now over Gibson. You said I had to get gross at quarterback. What are we talking about? Gross at quarterback before you before. Like what's gross at quarterback for you? Oh, oh, oh I, I was like, what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, uh, like r- above Brady and Tannehill, like I'm talking like Goff right now. So talk not about, like gross. talking about my man's Jared Goff. Listen, li- I, I am, I am, and it's funny yeah. because it, this, you're talking about this future po- Lions franchise quarterback Jared Goff, and this is gonna upset you too. I, I have him right there with Stafford, and I, no, I, I think no, I, I think that's completely fair. No, we were talking about that before the show. It's completely fair, and I have so much Stafford. I have a lot of Stafford and Russ combos. So those teams are doing Ooh. great. You can imagine. Uh, luckily, I was able to get some cheap Genos. But yeah, like there are uh, not even including the rookies, 21 veteran quarterbacks. I'm easily taking over David Montgomery. So we're right there in that bottom bottom of the quarterback two range. Yeah. Dotson, 
I know you don't really love Dotson and you don't like the situation. I didn't hate him. Didn't, I didn't say you. I just didn't say you just didn't love him. You know, so I, I know, I know we can't go Watson or Olave because you're probably going to take those guys over right. over him and probably Pickens as well. Uh, give me, give me David Montgomery. Okay, but that's another one. If I'm not contending, I think that's an easy position where you can get a Dotson plus. Let's try to find. How about Dalton Schultz? We went Muth. We went Goddard, also in a contract year. We don't exactly know where he's going to land. Stays in Another Dallas. I, Schultz seems like the play. Doesn't stay in Dallas. We don't know. Yeah. The easy comparison is Dalton Schultz is going to be Austin Hooper. That's exactly what I was going like, to say. Like that. It's so easy and it's like so Look cliche. At you guys. Your Menzies are synced back up. <laughs> it just took an hour. <laughs> We had to get back into it. Yeah, you know? we got to get back into the uh, flow of things. Huh? You see what I did there? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Look at you. Uh, <laughs> give me, as it stands today, give me David Montgomery. But if I, if I knew, like, if I, you could guarantee me Dalton Schultz will get like a two or three year extension in Dallas, I would go Dalton Schultz. I would yeah, flip it. I agree. I think that's fair. I agree. I agree. All right. Let's wrap this thing up. Oh, Juju. How about Juju? Oh, Juju. I love Juju. Juju. Dulcich. Uh, I will take Dulcich. Uh, counterpart in uh, Chicago, Herbert or Monty? I'll go Montgomery. Uh, Rashad White. I will go Rashad White. Not worried about Brady going to the Vegas, Las Vegas next year. Oh, definitely. But I think Rashad White has shown enough versatility in his game, even if there's a one two punch. I think there's enough there for Rashad White to be involved in the passing game. Uh, but, yeah, so many, like, how many teams, like, like we do our, our, Mitch and I do our annual projections, and I have everything set up behind the scenes, and, like, I just, I love doing that stuff. You know, gets my, gets my nerd juices flowing. But, like, I, I like to get the veterans in there already that I feel comfortable with, just to get some of the administrative work, you <laughs> sure, know, out sure. of the way. How many teams, though? Like, I got to leave blank here for for several months. Like, yeah, yeah. So much is going to change, and I don't like to go back and delete it. So I just leave it blank for now. <laughs> I like. Yeah, it. so many question marks. All right, I'm gonna throw one more at you, and it's controversial. Damian Pierce for Montgomery. He's got to make you say it. Am I? <laughs> <laughs> Stay it, you son of a bitch. Uh, Damien, I'll take Damien Pierce, guys. Hallelujah. <laughs> the truth shall I, set you free. I will take Damien Pierce. It's going to make you say it. <laughs> All right, let's wrap this up. Let's get out of here. We, If you like what you heard today, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. Make sure you go over to the Dynasty Theory channel and subscribe to those guys. Obviously, um, he's got... Some great stuff going on over there as well as Mitch and Dan. Um, you guys staying going live, or is that is that we're we're done going live? We're about to go Patreon show, uh, move move it to an extra Patreon show. Are you staying live on Tuesdays at nine? Uh, we're still live nine o'clock Eastern every Tuesday. Sometimes we skip a week, um, but yeah, we're going live Tuesday with our weekly show. Kick it on the podcast feed. And then Mitch and I, every weekend, typically Saturday mornings, do a, an extra episode on the Patreon. But, uh, man, I, if I could get Mitch and Dan, like, they, they're both, I mean, everybody's crazy busy right now. Sure. Every, you know, um, I, I, I would love to do more shows on, on YouTube, but it's just like, yeah. <sighs> you know, family. Yeah. For kids. Work. Life. Family. Kids. kids and family. Damn kids. SOPs. Went and shot my load. <laughs> twice all right man well i appreciate it i'm looking forward to chatting more we had so much to get to and you know we didn't get to it um and we got a whole nother slew of things in the text chain to, to get to so hopefully we'll be chatting all off season hopefully we'll have some mocks with with with, with the six i don't know how to what was six sided well, thing six shooter six a six pod <laughs> <laughs> what about a sexagon? A sexagon? Yeah. I mean, oh, but yeah. with a right. pod? With it's, a pod? I think it's a sex no. pod. Yeah. <laughs> do a sex pod. I mean, with these two handsome guys next to me, that's I, what we're going to call it. They're always sex pods, but I mean, 
Here, I got to take some layers off. Hold on. <laughs> Keep not in here. All right, JB. Appreciate you. Appreciate all you guys out there. Like, review, five stars. Like, subscribe, comment, all those things. Um, do we'll, it. We we'll told you to. Now you can do it. We'll be back at you here very, very soon. All right. We appreciate y'all. Peace. Awesome.